January the 2nd. We are live at Collard Valley Cooks where we cook like Mama did. Yesterday we had our collards, our black eyed peas in cornbread. Today we're going to have a southern cabbage, fried cabbage. So everything's going in it. So we are excited about it and we're going to get started. We're going to start with some bacon. And I'm going to brown the bacon in here. And while this bacon is getting nice and crunchy, I'm going to slice up my sausage. You can use any sausage you like, um, whatever you like the best. I buy what's on sale. I don't have something that I particularly buy every time. Um, and lots of times I do buy beef instead of pork just because it, I think it's a little better for us. Whether it is or not, I don't know. What, um, what kind of sausage is that? Do you remember? Oh, no. Um, I don't remember, y'all. I already threw the thing away. Oh. I, it was whatever was on sale. Yeah. I usually get what's on sale. I'm going to throw this on the other side of the skillet. And while these are getting nice and toasty, um, we are going to start chopping up some onions and peppers. We're going to use a lot of stuff in this today. We're going to be using some brown sugar and vinegar. Chris, go ahead and show what we're using. Okay. We're going to be using some brown sugar, some vinegar, some Worcestershire, some onion powder, some soul food seasoning from the Dollar General. It's a good thing. And then some roasted garlic powder. Uh, and of course, we're going to put onion and peppers in it as well and bacon so it's going to be really tasty everything but the kitchen sink yeah so i had it really mixed up into cornbread so i'll do that once we sign off and me and chris will have cornbread with it for lunch or if i have time in between you'll see me throw some together so we are going to go ahead and slice up our vegetables and our cat wants out she is talking. We should have showed her, Chris. They would have enjoyed seeing her this morning. Well, it's afternoon now. It's, this is our lunch today. We're having a late lunch because um, we got up late. So I guess you could call it, I don't know what you'd call it, lunch and dinner, kind of. We're going to have a light supper tonight. We're going to have fish. And so... This is something heavy. Tonight will be something light. So we got our onion. I'm going to cut these peppers up, <clears throat> and I'm going to use uh, half of each one. And then I'll save the other half for another recipe. It's going to be pretty, ain't it? Mm-hmm. It will be. I'm going to take these over to the sink and get the middle out of them with a pair knife. Somebody asked me earlier um, about my paring knife, and they said that the one that I had linked on the website was really expensive, and I found another one that was the same brand and everything. So I gotta redo that link for y'all because I couldn't live without my good old paring knife. It's the best one that I've ever had. So I'm just gonna take this core out of the pepper and knock the seeds out right quick. Not that that hurt anything, right? I'm sure that tastes good. Does anybody know why we don't eat those seeds? <laughs> and if we did, you know, is there any consequences? <laughs> or do we just not put them in there because people don't think they're pretty? I wonder if they stay hard like they, you know, I don't know. they'd bother your teeth or something. I mean, they're so little. Yeah. You know? Let's see. Maybe people just... Maybe they save them. Yeah. To grow peppers. Who knows? I might can help us out on that one. That might be a Google search. All right, so I'm just going to slice these in strips. <clears throat> I'm really hoarse today. As usual... I hope y'all are having a great new year. Um, I don't know if you know it or not, but I do have a 
channel that's a personal channel that I do called Real Southern Woman. Real Southern Woman. And that is where I do Bible study. And uh, we have started with the new year. Um, we, we use the day by day with Charles Spurgeon. If you are interested in a Bible study to start out your new year right with the Lord, um, you should tune in and watch Real Southern Woman. It's on Facebook and YouTube Live in the mornings. And if you don't catch it live, you can always just watch it. You can do a replay. But I have found it very good for me already. Um, I've been doing it for about a week. I got a new webcam for my work computer, and so it makes it really easy to get my Bible study done in the morning. Let's go over here and turn this. We're going to cook this until that bacon gets good and crispy, so it'll take a few minutes. And then once it gets nice and brown, we'll use our uh, drippings and throw our veggies in here. I'm actually going it, to, it's not real oily, that sausage is not, because it's beef. I'm actually going to add a little olive oil to it. See if I can't get that bacon to cook in a little quicker since we're live today. And that olive oil ain't going to hurt us. Now I do kind of want to start cooking a little healthier in the new year. Uh, this is not my first dish that is healthy, necessarily. It's just something I want to do for the new year. You know, it's still the holidays. Yeah. Just for your information. Yes. So, um, what we'll probably do, I, what the main thing I want to do, for real, is start having three vegetables at night, or at least two vegetables. And when I say vegetable, not a starchy vegetable, um, with dinner. And I'm hoping that'll help me and Chris. Um, It'll make us healthier, and it will also keep us from, oh, yeah. it'll keep yeah. us better off. And I really think we should stop eating after 7 o'clock. He, he has a habit of eating dessert really late. And so we're going to make a, a small cornbread for me and Chris. I'm just going to do a cup recipe. So we're going to use a cup of white lily cornmeal mix. Um, we're going to use one egg. Some oil. You can melt a little butter and throw in there if you want to. But since I am cooking on the fly, I'm using whatever I got on the counter. A little oil always makes it taste good. And then butter milk is all you need. Let's go ahead and um, get this out. I think it's ready to take out of the skillet. And we're going to take it out of the skillet and um, start our veggies while we're making that cornbread. I think I'll use this. This is my one of my new tools, and I really like it. Strainer. So you're going to want to leave that down in there, and um, throw your veggies in. That'll help flavor our fried cabbage. Be really good. So we're just going to set this to the side until we add it back into our dish. And we are going to throw this in there real quick. Pepper. Or onion. Now if you've got a shallot or something, you can throw that in too, but I don't have any. Because I know they're really strong. Um, and delicious as well. So we're just going to let these start to simmer in this skillet. This is a brazier. If you're wondering what it is, it's a brazier. It comes with a lid that doesn't have a vent on it, and that's why. Uh, but I use it like for my big skillet. Anytime I'm doing something like this, if I need a big skillet, this is what I use instead of a skillet. My brazier. It's a non-stick. It's wonderful. So we're going to grab the buttermilk cornbread. And I get whole buttermilk. I don't know if y'all can get it or not. I know some people really can't get a whole, the whole buttermilk. And if you can't, you know, just buy what you can. Um, but you need to at least buy some buttermilk. A lot of people try to make their own buttermilk. And I think you should uh, buy 
buttermilk. And they worry about it going out of date before they can use it all. I'm gonna have to add a little bit more to here because I kind of got that a little bit wetter than it ought to be. Uh, but they worry about it going out of date and uh, buttermilk will stay in your refrigerator for, I use it up to a month after the date. I say, oh, if you've got a good refrigerator that's cold. All right, I'm gonna grab me a iron skillet out here. We don't ever eat cornbread unless it's made in an iron skillet. And you've got to put some Crisco in it because it makes it nice and crunchy. And put plenty in there. And then sprinkle it with a little bit of this white lily cornmeal mix. A lot of people think you gotta preheat your skillet in the oven to get crunchy cornbread, but I'm telling you, if you try it this way, uh, you'll be shocked and surprised at how wonderful it is. Just make sure you flip it out. Um, when, it's done. when it's done. Yeah. Chris, that'll help me. Look, I got, a, I, I got a cornbread skillet in there already. I got to take it out. From last night, I threw it in there and forgot I threw it in there. So we got to get that out. There's me a preheated skillet. Yeah. Already ready for you. All right. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and put my oven on a um, bake convection. And that way it'll cook quicker since we're live. I've got to wash my hands and then we'll stir that pot. Tammy is stirring the pot stirring today. The pot. I have got buttermilk on your phone. It's okay. It's, it. it's not on the I screen. know, but it's close. <laughs> I wipe y'all's face off a little mm. bit. All right. So, let's stir up these beautiful veggies. And they're looking good. Looking good. Looking real good. Let's start adding a few things to it. We're going to add a little salt, not a lot, a little pepper, will you hand me that chicken bouillon over there, I'm going to throw a little bit of that in there, it'll be good, I probably shouldn't have put the salt in because I'm going to use a little chicken bouillon and I'm going to use a little soul food seasoning and that soul food seasoning is salty. So, if you're worried about your salt intake, you might want to leave the soul food seasoning out. For the salt. It don't take a whole lot of this. Uh, it's really, really good. And it's cheap because it's a Dollar General and it's a good seasoning. It's called soul food seasoning. Clover Valley. Can't go wrong with it. This is a little garlic powder. I didn't throw real garlic in there. Could have, I guess. You got some, throw it in there. This is onion powder. And I know I got onions in there, but onion powder is just good. I learned that from a viewer. I never bought onion powder until I started the show. This is a little Worcestershire going in. I'm going to throw in a little brown sugar. There we go. And a little bit, a little bit of white vinegar. There, that looks delish, delish. Okay, coming up, we're going to turn these back up a little bit, get these done, so we can start our cabbage in here. Isn't that pretty? That look delicious. Looks delicious already. Let me pick up my mess. Ooh, I'm glad we got sinks in the kitchen, aren't you? And put up my buttermilk. And y'all make sure, if you can get it, get you some white lily. Get you some white lily flour, make some biscuits, and get you some white lily cornmeal mix and make you some good old cornbread. You won't be disappointed. A lot of y'all, if you can't get white lily where you live because you live up north, you can get it from walmart.com. It's the cheapest place to get it. 
And of course, you can get it on Amazon through on Amazon through my website, but it's more expensive. So y'all just do what's best for y'all, okay? Cut up some cabbage. Sounds good. Just cutting through it, don't it? was a pretty head of cabbage and it is it's nice and loose on the inside really nice this is gonna be some good eating and I'm not gonna use any more than that because it's just me and Chris and the kids now, if you're feeding a whole bunch of people, then cut up your two sausages instead of one like I did and use the whole head of cabbage, okay? We're going to go ahead and start adding our cabbage in. This is the great part of ha about having this big skillet is your cabbage is going to fit in there. Now, if you've got a smaller skillet, no worries. You can put your cabbage in. Let it cook some of it till it cooks down and then add the rest of it. If you do that though, part of it's going to be more done than others. But you can do it. Doesn't mean you can't make the dish if you don't have a big skillet. Or a big wok. wok yeah, good. a wok would work good. And a pot really would work. Yeah. A stock pot would work, y'all. There's no reason why you couldn't do this in a good stock pot. Now, at this point, we are going to put a lid on top of it. And let those juices get down in there and cook that cabbage. Let me get me a lid. Universal lid. Fits everything. And it fits everything. Yeah. So we use it. All right. Huh. We're going to clean up our mess and put in our spices while that is in there simmering. And uh, I guess we can talk for a minute. Got any stories, Chris, for New Year's stories? I already told them my story was the gunshots and the <laughs> Yeah, that was 1999. Yeah. No. Yeah, song. everybody was worried about the world coming to an end, so they all was going to shoot their guns, I guess, on New Year's Eve. You think that's what it was? Well, yeah, it's 1999. I guess it was, it was. Y2K, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm no, sure. No, it wouldn't take the year 2000, though. Yeah. That would be the year 2000. Correct. It was Correct. 1999, New Year's Eve. So it would have been oh, I 2000. Oh, we were going into 2000. Correct, yep. Lord have mercy. See, but I'm sure I'm sure they shoot their guns every chance <laughs> every, they get. Every yeah, every chance they get. Yeah. In <laughs> uh, the fireworks. It seems like uh there's a lot more fireworks than there used to be. Now I, do I know that. Warm bread in the oven. Sometimes <clears throat> before it preheats. So some of y'all probably that just blows your mind. I've been doing that my whole life with everything. I even do it for cake with cakes lots of times. And I ain't never had no problem cooking. No, I don't mess anything up. I don't think he does either. And our cornbread's always crunchy because of that grease and that cornmeal in it. Oh yeah, it's always works delicious. perfect. Um I did notice when I opened this bag of white lily cornmeal that it had more flour in it than it normally does. And the way I noticed it's because when I poured it into my container it actually smoked. And it's never done that before. And I don't know if it was just the end of the barrel when they filled up that bag or if that's something new they're doing. I won't know until I buy some more. But uh, they're supposed to be sending me some flour and cornmeal. I'll be happy when I get it um, to show you guys. But it's made good cornbread. Oh, yeah, it has made good cornbread. I mean, there hadn't been anything. That flour in there has not hurt it a bit. Delicious. It's good. Now, when I was growing up, 
My Granny Nim grew corn, and they sent their corn to the feed mill every year. I mean every year until they were in their 90s. And they had their own corn mill ground. And so her corn mill was coarser, you know, than uh, a lot of people. I'm going to wrap this in plastic. And that's our sweet potato pound cake. We'll get that put on there. Yeah, we made a sweet potato pound pretty cake. Pretty soon. Yesterday, it's not real sweet potato tasting. And I didn't put food coloring or nothing in it, so it's not real orange looking. Because I used Bruce's yams because I had a can. And I thought, I'll throw this in here to make it moist and good. And um, I didn't have any sweet potatoes for New Year's. So I made a sweet potato pound cake. Y'all get to see that. Eventually, I'll put it on there for you. It's what I eat for breakfast. Yes, we like to toast it in the toaster. I'm going to show that on the video, too, because it's so good when you do it that way. Mm -hmm. So good. Let's get over here and look at this. Good. Now, I have several different, uh, those spices are going down in there. I'm going to put a little bit of water in here, I think, just a little bit. Got to steam it. Yeah, because the spices are wanting to stick on the bottom of the skillet a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to put a little bit of water in it, get all those spices out of up onto the veggies like they ought to be and not stuck to the sides of the skillet. It'll cook off pretty quick. Huh? See that juice down in there? How it? Oh yeah, it'll cook off. And uh, it'll get all that good stuff off the deglazed the skillet. Especially since it's a non-stick. And then once this cooks down just a little bit more, we're going to add our meat. And uh, have us a feast. Lunch feast. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yummy up. Lunch feast is right. That's good left over, too. Yes, it is something good left over. You're right. So, I think you emptied the dishwasher for me today, too, didn't you, Daddy? Mm -hmm. On top of it. Chris didn't have many chores today. What'd you do today? Went and got a filter for the... I mean, an air filter for the lawnmower. And cleaned up the kitchen. That's about it. Yeah. I've been working on Facebook some today. Answered YouTube comments. All right. It looks like this is going to get done before cornbread does. And I'm not going to wait on the cornbread before I sign off for y'all. So I'm going to go ahead and take the lid off of this because I don't want to overcook it. And I am going to add the meat into it. Mm -hmm. We're going to mix it up and taste it for y'all. What did I do with my spoon just now? The red one? No tell. Okay. All right. Well, that looks good, don't it? Mm. It's a pretty dish, too. Yes, it is. All right, let's make us a little plate. Our oven's just now preheated. my cabbage to have a little bit of a bite to it. So this is done to me. I think it's ready. Let's put some of this bacon on here. Some bacon. We're going to give it a try with y'all. Turn it off. Let's see how it tastes. It looks good. Yeah. Pretty, ain't it? Mm -hmm. How can it not be good with bacon? And... Mm. That's good. It's good stuff. Huh? You can't mess up with sausage and bacon or mm. cabbage. You put anything I in got it. a little bit of sugar and vinegar. Mm. That's some good southern 
fried cabbage. I hope y'all have a wonderful day. And thanks for watching Collard Valley Cooks, where we cook like Mama did. Bye, y'all.